Hello, hello everyone. Today I will be featuring the Colbert, a tier 10 French premium cruiser. As usual, when I aim for a cap, I ping the destroyer. I'm pinging a destroyer that I'm gonna give him cover. And then of course I'm pinging the objective to let him know I want him to go to that objective and I will cover him if he goes there. Simple stuff, but usually it helps DDs make up their mind if they want to go for objectives or not. Also, in case you guys are wondering what do I look like, what do different CCs look like, I just posted a picture of all the different CCs on my Instagram, which you can find a link below. Basically, all the, I think, bunch of the EU, bunch of the Russian, bunch of the NA CCs, all in a group picture at the War Gaming St. Petersburg office, in case you're interested in what these people look like. Anyway, now that my casual sellout of my new Insta is gone, the call bearer. This is basically what happens when you supersize an Atlanta. That is the call bearer. The health pool, 36.1k. Not exactly that impressive. But then again, I would say it's the squishiest thing out there in terms of health pool if Wargaming hadn't recently released the Smolensk, which has 32.4k. There are some significant differences though, namely that, well, the Colbert without speed boost, you can see it's actually really not that fast. It only does 33 knots. But much like the other French um, cruisers, it's got that 20% speed boost, so you can become really zippy on demand. And it actually needs it because, well, it doesn't have a lot of things like the Smolens does. For example, no torpedoes, which is a pretty significant issue if someone is rushing you. And of course, no smoke, which means playing the Colbert is significantly more challenging than playing the Smolensk. Because you can't just park basically anywhere on the map and just pop a smoke and be useful. No, Colbert is much more about finding positioning behind islands. Another thing you probably notice is also the shell travel time. Significantly slower than the Smolensks. On the other hand, the DPM is absolutely there. In fact, uh, well, default range is 13.8. I'm gonna compare it to Smolensk because Smolensk also has 13.8. These are the two lowest cruiser ranges. Besides that, the lowest range I think is like Minotaur and Salem and Des Moines. These are all 15.8. So significantly lower, but of course, because the guns are such small caliber, they benefit from AFT. It has 16 guns. Um, not can't really use all of them at all times. Well, it's kind of iffy getting with your full broadside off, but in general, the firepower, the DPM on the ship is completely absurd. Uh, in ideal conditions, it's 576 if you add in BFT, which I obviously have. If you add in the reload mod, which I obviously also have, we, you reach over 700,000 DPM. In comparison, something like the Henry has 182 with the reload mod. So, yeah, that's like four times more. But, of course, what must be remembered is that even with IFHE, the Colbert does not punch through 32 millimeters of armor. So when you shoot something like a Republic, which has 32 millimeter plating everywhere, an IFHE ship would de deal full damage. On the other hand, you can see the shatters uh, rack up. And that's because even with IFHE in this build, we still can only pen 27 millimeters. On the other hand though, the fire chance is a 7% if you add in the flags and DE, which I run, you can get 10. I think it might be 9 with IFG, I'm not sure, but around 9 to 10. Regardless, it actually makes you the best fire starter in the game. You're even better at starting fires than the booster, you're even better at starting fires than the Smolensk. You are a disgustingly good fire starter simply because you throw such a ridiculous amount of shells at the enemy that sooner or later you will get fires. You don't need a good fire chance when this is how many shells you're throwing at the enemy. Yamato is trying to push up and of course trying to push in with battleships in the current year when ships like Smolensk and Kolber exists is not a very enjoyable experience as this Yamato is finding out. He damaged, he made a mistake as well, he damaged on the first fire and that's something you never do because I'm systematically adjusting my aim, you see I'm constantly lowering the aim. I started at the back, I got a back on a fire on the back of his ship and now I'm aiming lower and lower to get additional fires at as well as trying to farm his superstructure. So he's cooking, he's cooking real fast. Remember the Pabita challenge which was 100k damage at um, 15 minutes? Yeah well we have what 93 at we still got 10 seconds. Can we hit the 100k at 5 minutes? And yes, we can. We actually completed the Pavita challenge in the Colbert. The Pavita challenge, for those unaware, is nicknamed after the ridiculous Soviet battleship that Wargaming is considering adding into the game, which has basically god tier dispersion. Regardless, 
APDPM on, the, on this thing is also completely ridiculous. 900,000 with all the build. Uh, we'll see if you get an opportunity to show this. If not, I've shown the AP build earlier in the game. Regardless, I've, I've featured the details of this ship before, so that's not actually that important. What is more important is, of course, the positioning. And as I mentioned, this is a highly positioning-based ship. You note how I was ducking in and out behind that island? That's because you also, with the speed boost and the acceleration mod, you're a fairly nimble ship. So, you want to keep constantly uh, finding the fattest, slowest targets, aka battleships, and you want to be able to farm them from cover, as I'm here. You could get more range if you traded reload for range mod, but I mean, look at this, I'm shooting at something 15 kilometers away and shell travel time is already 13 seconds. The arc is absurd, adding even more range wouldn't really increase the effectiveness of this ship at all. Sure, you'd be able to shoot at ships that are further away, but you're not actually going to hit those ships further away, so I prefer going for this. He's been undetected for a while, but I'm basically just blind firing where he's going to sail, and because you throw out so many shells, you usually end up wrecking in, as you can see, some additional hits basically every single time. We're at 150k damage, uh, about six minutes into the match at this point, six and a half. I'm um, trying to support my Shima. I'm asking for intelligence data, hoping he'd give me some scouting. My BBs are playing pretty safe in the back, but I don't really mind it so much because, well, uh, you are very teammate reliant, and the most important teammate for you when you play the Colbert is your DDs. You want to go somewhere where your DDs are playing, and luckily, the Shima is playing fairly safe. He's just He's giving information, he's scouting, he's not overextending, not getting himself killed. Because if he died, my, my job would be much, much harder. But as long as he's alive, well, we're just farming. And we're farming, and we're farming, and that fire chance, that fire chance. If you just get to spam something, then the damage you rack up in like a couple of seconds is so completely absurd. Um, and the AP is, of course, just as ridiculous. I, of course, uh, I've been pretty vocal about the Kulber. I think it's a terrible addition to the game. But even when I think it's a terrible addition to the game, the Colbert is not nearly as bad as the Smolensk is. The Smolensk is an even worse addition to the game because the Smolensk requires basically no skill at all to succeed in. Um, you get rushed, you can torp them, um, you can smoke up basically anywhere on the map and just farm from the cover if you smoke. Positioning isn't even required. On the other hand, the Colbert, because of the no torps, it's absolutely possible to just YOLO the hell out of this ship and or because it doesn't have a smoke you're also very very tied to island cover and teammate smokes and so forth of course you can make it very simple and easy in the call you to division up with the destroyer the destroyer smokes you up note that because my shima smoked up the way he did i'm going to be able to use that as vision cover i'm reversing out uh, into the open and i'm using this open water to be able to bring all my guns to bear on this montana also trying to push up i guess i didn't see what happened to that shimakaze earlier they are getting trying to do some blind fire into the smoke it's to be expected the colbert is actually pretty easy to blind fire so keep that in mind when you're spamming from smokes um you can absolutely be blapped by blind fire in the smoke it doesn't have the luxury of uh, the smallest guns kind of pointing everywhere it can absolutely be blapped so i'm reversing some extra he gets over pins luckily as i reversed out if I'd stayed stationary, probably some citadels. So try to keep on the move when ships are shooting you. You're not actually that hard to hit. Still, uh, he does give broadside. If we switch to AP, maybe should have switched a bit sooner. I was a bit busy dodging. You get a taste of what the AP DPM is like, but he already angles away. So we're switching back to HE, and he doesn't appear to have any fires burning either. So obviously we have to remedy this issue. We've long since broken past 200,000 damage uh, with only nine minutes into the match we got a wither as well ridiculously quick wither there was a high caliber as well at, as nine minutes the damage is when the map favors the ship and when you have a team somewhat helping you giving providing you vision and this ship is just straight up disgusting i did get spotted there's a shima somewhere north i assume that spotted me so now we have to be very very careful the thing of course with being this huge huge damage dealer is that you're also a juicy juicy target that everyone absolutely wants to farm so in these situations it's better to just play it safe and angle extremely like i'm doing here you can absolutely be deleted quick and just play it very very safe you look for opportunities to use that to deal damage you find islands you find nukes you find positions where you're not detected and that's when you pour in all all the damage you can but when you're spotted you play safe the colbert especially without the speed boost is very very vulnerable um with 36k health you can get blapped quite easily i did mention the ap the ap pin is eh, 
it's honestly pretty garbage. It's very, very slightly better than small Smolensk AP pen, but it still means that 10 kilometers your AP pen is 81, which means the only thing you can basically Citadel at 10 kilometers is a perfectly broadside Colbert or Smolensk. Everything else will easily shatter. Um, at any ranges beyond that, you're not citadeling anything, so you're just farming AP for the damage, not for the citadels themselves. In terms of flight time ballistics, uh, Colbert is the worst. Um, Colbert is absolutely by far the worst of them all when it comes... I think at 10 kilometers, the flight time is overwhelmingly the worst uh, across the board. But that's kind of to be expected, and I think it's a good balancing factor, even though I think this ship is too over the top. This ship does have some checks in place. Um, I don't like the Colbert because I think it's too punishing to ships trying to push in. You saw the Montana, you saw the Yamato. They tried to push in, I basically made mincemeat out of them. I made a barbecue fire out of those battleships, uh, and I think that's too over the top. But it's it's more punishing than the small ones, yes, because the small ones could stop right here where I am, in the middle of the open, smoke up, pop hydro, and just start farming, and there isn't really much the enemy could do about it. And that's why I think the small ones is more brain dead than this thing. They're both stupid, and I think they're both negatives to the game. Um, they're, they're poor influences on how the game, how the matches play out, but at least it's not as bad. So I think th uh, th at least there's something good about the release of Smolensk. You can look at the other ships and go, well, yeah, it's kind of horrendous, but you know, at least it's not as bad as the Smolensk. <laughs> so yeah, I guess there was some benefit to that release as well. Once again, being detected, I know there's a Shima sailing around somewhere there. I'm gonna play it a bit safe. See if we can lob some shells over on the hidden. We do get spotted right away, so I need to keep that in mind. They have a Salem there, because the battleships are mostly dead, so I think if the Salem shoots me, I should have plenty of time to dodge. I am angling away though, because the Hindenburg does load AP and the Salem does open up. There we go. Now you actually want to be fighting Salems. You want to be fighting Hindenburg, Salems, heavy cruisers in general. You want to be taking them on in the Colbert. And the reason is if you're running the build I am, which is the, the IFHE build. The reason for this is um, you do so much DPM that you can melt them so ridiculously quickly that you can easily take these one versus ones, provided you, of course, get the opening volley. If they are very much prepared for you and they're all in kind of angled away, they're kiting, they get to play the fight they want to take, um, then of course they can take you on. But if you get to choose the engagement, in this case, it looks like the DD was sailing away. Maybe he went into the cap. Regardless, you're undetected. I'm undetected right now. And I know there's a sail I'm pushing up. So obviously, I'm going to try to close the distance and get the ambush in on him return, in return. Yeah, B is being contested. So that tells me the Shima is inside the cap. And that's exactly the information I needed. I do get the ambush on the Salem. Closing this as much as I can. As soon as I get spotted, I start opening up. Note I'm already angling away. He's still not shooting at me, so I'm giving broadside. But the second those guns, the second those guns start pointing at me, the Hindenburg is already pointing at me, so we're angling away a bit. But we're preparing for the Salem. You can see, of course, with IFHE just how much constant damage we do to him. He does start shooting. He's still shooting HE though, so I'm not worried. I could use AP here, but honestly, HE is so damn effective, and I hope he can get some fires in case he starts, decides to start running. He does finally load AP, and this is of course the moment that we need to start worrying. The shells look a bit short, so I don't dodge too much yet. Those shells look better on the other hand, so those things we'll, we will need to dodge. I'm a bit lazy on the dodge, and you can see how quickly it punishes you when you're lazy on the dodge. That was just me being greedy. Uh, because we have such a lead, but it did give you an idea of just uh, how easily, if you do get caught broadside, how easily other cruisers can blab this thing. It's got a big citadel, it's got no armor. Every citadel, can, every cruiser can citadel you, including the Smolensk. Uh, you can absolutely be farmed in this thing. I'm expecting the Hindenburg to accelerate soon. He's still reversing, still reversing. Now it looks like he's gonna start accelerating. So we're aiming right at him. And because we know he's gonna accelerate, we're gonna aim in front of him soon. You need to preemptively, you see how much you have to lead, how much you have to predict the enemy maneuvers to be able to bring your guns to bear because, well, shell travel time is so completely absurd. I'm trying to get in behind the island. But in general, when you've got this kind of health advantage, you can absolutely play aggressive against uh, other cruisers. Him then actually gets blamped by the Yamato, sadly, not by me. So now we're kind of stuck. Well, we have the points lead, but and we are looking to win the game. But honestly, I played the Colbert a fair bit of games, and at this point, I just want my 300,000 damage. I've had, I think, two or three games where the game ends with 
298 and 299,000 damage. So I'm looking at my, my damage right now and it's 283 and I'm like, oh, come on. This is surely not going to happen like a fourth time in a week or something. This is stupid, so we're going to play very aggressively. Still, of course, I always play for the win. I always play for the team. So we're not going to take any silly risks like my team getting blapped and farmed on the way. So we're going to see if we can secure the objective while at the same time pushing north towards the enemy. Because you can be greedy for damage, but without being dumb about it. You see how slow I am now as soon as speed boost ran out? This is with speed flying. As a cruiser, this thing is dreadfully sluggish. But it's something you do get used to. Um, oh, sorry about that. The HE shell damage is 2.1k, so it's basically IG and DD HE damage. Uh, but of course, the sheer number of HE that you throw out, well, you blot out the sun, to put it quite simply. Turret Traverse is absurd, it's DD Turret Traverse, I think it's 6 seconds for a full uh, 180 degree, degree Turret Traverse, so obviously Expert Marksman is completely unnecessary. Oh, something that I do have to keep uh, have to mention though is that um, much like the lower tier French cruisers, this thing loses rudder all the time. Rudder and honestly kind of engine as well because the Citadel armor is so thin, so last stand is something that I highly recommend on the Colbert. It makes it so much safer. In this game, perhaps you didn't see it so much because, well, I was able to use position in an, positioning enough to mitigate the incoming damage. But in games where you have to open water gunboat and you get shot at a lot, your rudder and your engine tends to explode all the time. And last stand is very much needed. Speed boost gets activated, so I actually have a fair bit of speed. I was spotted, so I know the Shima is somewhere here on the right. And with this burst of speed that I'm getting now, I'm going to see if I maybe, maybe, maybe can ambush and get the surprise on him. Usually DDs tend to get caught off guard by just how quickly you can close the distance between them. My Shima is also going north, so he might give me vision, and he does in fact give me vision. Shima gets, gives me vision of this guy, and this is not where you want to be as an enemy DD. Uh, as I mentioned, IGN HE, but with this kind of reload, the DPM is disgusting. Even if you manage to smoke up instantly, blind fire, I've shown you just how little Colbert cares about being smoked up, um, you can still easily farm him to death. His torps are dropped, but they're spotted miles away. I think these might be 20 kilometer torps, um, especially after the recent King of the Sea tournament. We've seen a lot of Shimakazes run 20 kilometer torps, and they are, of course, basically completely useless against cruisers as long as they're, well, not blind. Um, because those have no chance of hitting you. They might have been 12, but honestly, I think those were 20s. They were spotted so far away so safely. Um, Basically, the, the longer range uh, Shimakaze Torps, the 20km ones, they have extremely poor concealment on the torpedoes. And that means they are extremely ineffective. Which is why, of course, um, I highly recommend the 12km Torps. Even though I have posted a vid, vid with the F3 torpedoes, those are still not recommended for obvious reason. My Yamato is being hunted by the Montana and the Smolensk. And I did mention I wanted 300k damage. Look at my damage. 299. So we are, there's no way we're gonna be uh, dragging our feet here. We're gonna go aggressive. I shoot intentionally into the water to make sure I get detected. I know the Smolensk probably can't resist the bait. Cruiser in the open, squishy. Smolensk, he's used to being the, uh, the predator. He, of course, instantly turns around. He starts farming. They think, oh, this is their way into the game, killing me. So I let him start farming. I wait for the Montana to shoot and I wait to go dark. And as soon as we've gone dark and the Montana has fired his shell, his volley, meaning I got about 25 seconds before he can shoot again, and we've closed the distance to the point that the small ends can no longer has the advantage in shell velocity, this is where we start raining. You know how, how everyone hates the small ends? I have to say, I hate them as well, and this does feel pretty damn good. Have you ever seen a small ends with absolutely brutalized my HE? Well, that's what you're seeing right now. He switches to AP. I angle in and I get pop my heal as well to make sure there's no risks going. And of course with the improved healing that the Colbert has, we easily, completely brutalize the small ends. I start spamming the Montana as well, but sadly the game and the points are about to run out, so we won't be able to pad our stats more than this. Game ends and, uh, well, 314,000 damage. 923 shell hits, 17 fires, wither, confederate, high caliber. 
Game didn't. This was a game that, based on the start, could easily maybe have been a 400,000 damage game, even. But honestly, this makes a pretty damn good statement as well. I keep getting requests for the Colbert build, so I figured I might as well finally make a vid where I can link the the build at the end. So I, I like basically first I like showing how the build works. So you get an idea of just how effective it can be, and then I show you the build, and you can decide yourself if you want to use it. Personally, I think this build is stupidly effective. 3.3k base, uh, basically it's melted everything in the north. We melted the DD, we melted the battleships, we melted the cruisers. There's nothing that Colbert can't melt. On the flip side, it also tends to melt quite easily itself, but I still, as I mentioned, I don't think it's a good addition to the game because... You don't want to be discouraging battleships from pushing in, and Colbert does exactly that. It discourages them. Detailed report is 2,472 HE shells fired, 44 AP shells fired. Not really a lot of AP this game, but I mean, I do have other Colbert commentaries where you can see the AP damage, which is completely ridiculous as well. 2.5k shells fired total though, which is of course stupid. One and a half wither, that's kind of how you count withers and the Colbert, because if you want to farm them, it's very easy. 1.8 million potential for cruiser, pretty okay for Colbert. Honestly, not that much, because uh, when you open water gunboat and this thing, so many people just want to kill you for good reason that you tend to rack it up. Anyway, this was more of a, damn, this ship is stupid, more than any sort of in-depth uh, commentary. So let me show you guys my build for this damn stupid ship. Right, as usual, well, I can start by showing you the armor to give you an idea of what I meant about this thing being very, very squishy. Um, <laughs> yeah, 16 millimeters, 30, so you can actually bounce some AP if you're angled, but of course, nose and bow gets overmatched by almost everything except 203 millimeter guns. The Citadel is actually gigantic. Um, when we skip this off, you can see this is the waterline, and you can see just how much above the waterline the Citadel sits, with only 80mm plating and only 38 on the front. So, battleships and big guns eat this thing alive quite comfortably. Build-wise, let's start with the module. Well, first of all, consumables. Defensive AA, I prefer it because the AA on the ship, I didn't mention it, but the AA on the Colbert is actually brutally strong. It's one of its great strengths. It does massive, massive AA damage. So you do want to build defensive AA. Speed boost, pretty obvious. And of course, heal. You already have four heals without Superintendent. So I actually don't bother to spec Superintendent because, well, just using the four heals is difficult. I don't know if I've ever actually managed to use all five hills in a game with Superintendent, so I don't rate it very highly. Main armaments, you got a bunch of turrets, they're very, very squishy, you want them to stay alive. Speed boost, you're a French cruiser, do the math. Better AA, for obvious reasons. Acceleration, because, well, you saw how you play the ship, you sit behind islands and spam, so obviously acceleration to quicker get on the move is very, very important. Concealment, obvious reasons, you are squishy, but your concealment is actually very competitive. 10.8, this is without concealment expert. And more duck up for that faster, faster reload. Build-wise, Honor, if you can spare him, is of course the best captain for any French uh, ship, mainly because it's, he's got the improved adren adrenaline rush. He's amazing on everything. Usually people pr prefer him on battleships because he's also got the improved turret traverse. Still though, if you can spare him, obviously the prime choice. You start, priority target, I would say last stand first. This thing really, it loses it so often. Last stand, followed by BFT for faster reload, followed by AFT to get decent range. 13.8 is very crippling at tier 10 and IFHE for better pen. After that, you build AR, and after that, you can build further fire and chance. Let's actually check my fire and chance so I wasn't talking nonsense. It's 9%, normally 10, of course, but IFHE removes 1%. So yeah, we end up at 9% fire and chance. But obviously, that's more than enough, as you can see from the game. It's very, very easy to start fires in this thing. So that was the build for the Colbert. You can stop bugging me on Twitch now. I've given you the build, I've given you the commentary, you've been asking for it, I did it. Thank you very much for watching, I hope you guys enjoyed this. This one was a more of a casual commentary than the most in-depth strategy thing, because, well, I'm not exactly too enthused about the Colbert, just like I'm not too enthused about the Smolensk. I don't think these, games, these ships really suit the game, but hey, what do I know? Thank you guys for watching. Feel free to follow me on whatever social media you feel like. I hope you guys enjoyed it and I will talk to you guys later.